Um, Sayan. Oh, the one you I went to? Yeah, Hot Pog Diner. Best pancake. Hot Pog was good. I had a good time out there. That was good. Rob's sitting there nodding right now. It was good. So you guys, did you guys go after you trained together? Is that what happened? No, we, were, we went to a haunted house together. <laughs> Listen to this, Zach. So Don buys these outfits that are Cobra Kai one, onesies for men. That's so awesome. so I, I went to, you know, we went to this haunted, haunted house and I had no one to zip up the back of my skull costume. So I was in the parking lot and had to ask somebody to zip me up. Now, picture some a 240 plus pound guy getting out of his Jeep in a skull costume and say, excuse me, miss. <laughs> with no time out, with a gigantic bulge in his pants too. Like impressive. He yes. got out of the Jeep and the woman was like, I was, was like, holy shit. It was, it was impressive. I think my wife was even like, holy shit. But uh, no, that, then, that, that's the lady at Curveball. What? That's so uh, funny. Then, <laughs> <laughs> and we had Patrick pancakes, uh, hamburgers at the diner. <laughs> and fries. <laughs> oh, but Frank, you I want to be honest. Frank ordered, like, I'm ready to order, like, I, I don't order short stacks. Like, let's be clear. Like, when I order pancakes, I, I order pancakes. You go for it? Yeah. Like, would you want three or four? I'm always going for I always go. Yeah. one up right this one goes to 11 it's final tap um but uh yeah. frank was like, oh, short stack please and i'm like what yeah get yourself another roll of toilet paper for that large stack that's all that means. <laughs> what did you get you got curly fries or something you ordered pancakes for rob after but someone ordered curly fries i was like really? <laughs> jimmy the yeah. bull Jimmy the Bull. Oh, it's Jimmy the Bull. It was. Yeah. He's like, can I get curly fries with that? Like Mickey Mouse fries. Who, like, who, so who, who is this dude? Who is this, another guy you train with or just a friend of yours? Oh, my God. It's bring him on. He's a friend of mine who, who traveled for 20 years with Metrics, who's a power bodybuilder who benched 1,000 pounds. And he's like, he's on Dave Palumbo's podcast all the time, Jimmy the Bull. But he was explaining to Don how the earth was flat. <laughs> oh. And that Copernicus was an asshole. But yeah, I think you told me that story, Don. But yeah, I mean, I love those uh, those conversations because obviously they they make a lot of sense and just people really yeah. kind of. I'm sure, Don, your mind was changed, right? You were like all this time. I thought it was round. Well, I love this theory on it. He was like, you know, the Earth is flat, and I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, when you look out in the distance, the water, it just yeah. you don't see the curvature of it. I'm like, oh, right. Geez. And I, I was said, like, well, Pernicus. And he goes, Copernicus, he's an asshole. His <laughs> 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 But I, I love, love Jimmy geez. the Bull. I love it. We I, should yeah, have I, a clip on Jimmy the Bull on. Can we bring him on? Yeah, dude, of course. He's right yeah, he's working right now. We should definitely bring him on. Dude, he's also, why don't we set up a time where we can all just be at your barn and we'll, all, we'll just do yeah. it there? Like, Fine, I'd rather I'll do that. I'll have a catered yeah, event. We'll have food in here. Catered event. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you don't throw don't give me that thorn protein with daily dose oatmeal i want like oh, no, we're doing... toothpicks in them <laughs> no no we'll, we'll get uh i'll have on pre diner maybe send over stacks of pancakes or something that'd be nice or rob keys oh I should... stacks. Oh, we'll have louis from rob keys to uh, do a delivery right diablo i think i ordered his lifting straps Right, what's right, 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 how do you say that name? Right, see, am I saying that right? Sure, his lifting straps are his lifting straps are good. I feel, good. I do you feel, use lifting straps though? I, I don't really no. use them. I mean, I know I look, I shrugged, you know, a couple, couple thousand pounds, but I just, uh, no, I, I don't, but I don't, so really I don't know. if I feel like my grip's going for some reason, I might throw on once in a blue moon. But when's the last to... time you use straps, Don? For, I think it's recent. I think I, I did it with Frank. We were doing dumbbell rows at like 150s. And I think I started because the handle gets thicker. I started like my, my palms are getting sweaty. Frank didn't need them, but I, I threw them on for I think the last set with 150s. Yeah. I used them for Gorilla Wear in 1994. <laughs> 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 and it took me 20 minutes to use them. You had to wrap them. I'm like, fuck this. this yeah, I, I was the same. They were just. I would just leave one of them somewhere. So I would always end up with one and I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Like, this is just useless. Yeah. And like so 
wrapping legs and whatever knees. Yeah. Uh, Greg but, Valentino yeah. too. Uh, uh, first of all, I thought that was great. I thought he said Greg Valentine. I'm like, Greg the Hammer Valentine? Like, what? we're talking like the 80s. <laughs> Wait, did, did John Claude Van Damme ever pay royalties to Frank Seppi for stealing his look and aura? <laughs> <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard in week. Oh my God, <laughs> Tron City. That's amazing, dude. The oh, other day, the, the other day, Someone said I look like Kevin Bacon. So Dom was calling me Frank Bacon. Now I'm JVD. Who's better? <laughs> Who would you rather be, Kevin Bacon or mm. or Ron Dom? Well, I think it depends on what era. Like Bacon yeah. in Bacon in Footloose. Let's dance. Yeah, like Bacon in Footloose. Like, like, would you rather have Bacon's dancing abilities in that era, or would you rather have um, Jean Claude Van Damme's blood sport talents? Kumite, John Van Damme, yeah. all just long. Yeah, if you can win the coup bacon. to him. I might take Bacon because he also fought in that scene. Remember him and Chris Penn coming out there like, it's not too hard when it's five to one. And he goes out and gives that like jump <laughs> kick, that like karate, that, that crane kick. I'm and going like, Frank Dukes. Frank Dukes over Ren. Frank Dukes <laughs> over Ren. <laughs> Ren. It is Ren. Oh, my God. Ren and Willard, remember? Wow. All right. I'll take I'll take uh, John Claude Von Damme. I'll take that. Don's yeah. like a young, John's like a young JFK. Wow, geez, You're th these are these are good references. I did not, I wouldn't have thought of that, but now that you say it, I can't unsee it. I had, know, to sit, I, definitely. I had to sit and lunch, Zach, with your old boss telling me about George Magazine and uh, and and, and uh, JFK stories of Madonna. Did you were you privy to those private conversations? No, I never got those. It sucks, yeah, you, you know. Uh, it's just a, I really missed. I feel like I missed out. I just want to make money. <laughs> <laughs> I care about one thing, money. 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 <laughs> Mr. Burns. Mr. Money. Burns. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can we just talk about that guy all the time? Oh god. Oh, oh man. Shit. Uh so okay, Don, <laughs> so you guys are training uh you guys train together usually twice a week when you film it? Uh I, I mean honestly, we've been training like every day. Oh nice. <laughs> We trained yesterday. We didn't film it. We trained at Bebs. Okay. We yeah. We trained legs yesterday, and we did 13 sets of hack squats. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it was ridiculous. awesome. You hurting today, or you, how are you feeling today? Well, I have right. a I have a I have a contusion in my quad from hockey from weeks ago, and I, I literally went in. We I haven't been free squatting, so I'm like Frank, can we do some machines? He's like, actually, I want to do machines. I'm like, great. So I go into the um, the pendulum squat and I have literally 25 pound plates in each side. I thought my left leg was going to snap and I'm like, oh, this isn't going to be good. And then Frank, he's like, let's call, you know, being a great friend, great training partner. He's like, let's move to the hack squat. We get on the hack squat. It feels okay. It hurts, but I'm training and it's starting to loosen up and I'm thinking we're going to hit like three or four sets. And he's like, we're, we're, we're every set we're done and we're like, you want to add another one? We're like, fine. And then we sat there yeah. for three minutes talking about like an undulating pyramid. Like, let's work up to our heaviest six <laughs> and let's keep dropping quarters, but adding two reps. There's a point where like the last set, we did 125 reps. Total Jesus. Reps. Good Lord. And then, it's funny because we share the same mindset. Um, you know, like you'll go in with a program. And it could be the best program in the world, but you go by the ebb and flow of your body and how you feel, obviously how you feel. And we always throw a couple of audibles. Uh, it's like the Joe Weeder, uh, what's that principle? The Joe Weeder principle. Oh. I forgot the name of it. But Everything's whatever. a Joe Weeder principle though, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just like, just go outside the box and just kind of like ramp it up. We'll do 13 sets of, of hack squats. We'll do, you know, 10 sets of back squats, whatever it is, how we feel, you know, it's never stick yeah. to the same. But a lot of people can't do that. It's like, I have to stick to a program. If I deviate from, I'm not going to get gains. It's like, yeah, get over no. Yeah. Well, that's the funny thing, right? Because I, I feel like clearly you two guys and you're not alone in this, but you, you book that that trend, obviously. Like you don't need Don, and you talk about this a lot when you talk about working with people. You have to go by how they're feeling and how they're how they're doing. Like if you're <laughs> if somebody's not into it, why would you want to punish them just to like run them into the ground? It just doesn't work. No, hundred yeah. percent. I, I mean, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people are just lazy, 
And, you know, when you, when you tell, when I hear this comment, like I listen to my body, I'm like, well, you've had two years of training experience. What do you really know about your body yet? Like, you don't know, like we've done, if you combine the amount of programs, the three of us have done, it's probably, God, it's probably mind blowing. I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, just Frank alone, you know, it's 40, 40 fucking years of, of training program. You guys started training when he was like eight. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, but you think about it, it's, I don't care how smart someone is. I don't care what they have a degree in. There's something that can't replace experience. And there's something that can't replace the aging process. Like you're doing programs, you go through the aging process, you come back to programs, you have other stresses in your lifestyle, you have all these variables going on. And it really allows you to start, you know, thinking a bit differently. And, um, you know, it, it's fun to train with him because listen, we've come in here, we've had some shitty days. Like, we, you know, even yeah. from a personal standpoint, I won't get into it, but like he's walked in and he's looked at me certain days and been like, oh boy. And I've looked back at him walking in. I'm like, here we go. <laughs> like, it's going to be one of those. Like you've got life, you got shit that happens. Yeah. Like we've got families, we've got, we've got business. You're dealing with assholes on tele on phone calls. And unfortunately having to deal with people that aren't good people, it sucks. It's a shitty part of life. Right. But this is the one constant I think him and I understand that no matter what, we're going to leave here, you know, an hour later, 90 minutes later, according to yesterday, two hours later, and we're going to be feeling a hell of a lot different mentally than we did when we came in. And I think that's why we hooked up really nicely. And that's why, you know, we enjoy training together. If yeah, you think, also, about, oh, you God, think about training is the one thing that you can control in your life. You can't control a lot of, a lot of things. But if you don't feel great, there's way go about it and strategies to use like you know like we're talking about training outside the box is going to guarantee you a good workout there's no reason why you're going to leave the gym no matter how you feel if you like shit you gotta like, whatever it may be to leave that gym without having a great workout and mentally i need that and don needs that for all the shit that we have to deal with on a daily basis so yeah. we may not 100 percent but we're going to work 100 percent to our you know mental and physical capacity so no matter what definitely to have a great workout no matter and the days that we both feel good it's like you know yeah. uh ramped up 10 times it's like Zach, that's, and frank frank and Zach, that's the goal like at the end of yeah. the, the day like the one thing that i didn't know about frank and i got i never told you this frank i didn't really know this about you because you and i i mean over this last year we've spent more time together than we have in the last 25 30 years that we've known each other I always thought that like Frank was driven on, you know, how he looked, but he's really not, even though it's important, it's not his main driver. His main driver is how he feels. Yes. And, my, and but we, listen, how we look is a byproduct of like, when you feel great. And you right. Look, of course. Great, that's great. But all I wanted, all, like my entire goal is if I can come into every workout feeling like a, a, a monster, you know, feeling like I have a high level of energy and I'm present. That's it. That's all I want. That's it. Because then everything else falls into place. Then I know I'm going to have a good workout. I know I'm going to feel great. I know the last, rest of my day is going to be awesome. And that's it. Yeah, but, but doesn't having somebody like Frank or a, a partner, somebody that A, you can have fun with, but also be, you know, intense with when, when it calls for it, that really helps. I don't have that. So I don't have that. And that is something where I, I'm, I, I'm lacking, you know, and I know it and it sucks because... There's times where I'm like, all right, I'm going to kill it. And then I start doing stuff. And honestly, I get bored because it's just me again. Like, and I, I, I've always trained in gyms. I've always trained alone. I've never had a steady partner like, like you guys have. But yeah, that, you know, when I'm seeing this and hearing you guys talk about it, it is, I'm envious of it because I'm like, shit, that would not only help elevate me as a, you know, just thinking about this to myself, help elevate me, but also make it more fun. Also, you know, working at home can be incredibly isolating. It can be really right. fucking lonely. So to have somebody just to bullshit with and to laugh with and to kind of vent with while you're pushing each other, that would be, I think it's just a, a huge win uh, for me. Well, that would be over, cool. the, over the years, you know, I've trained with certain people, but not for a long time. Like I could train with anybody, but to have a really solid training partner that you have to share the same mindset you're not competitive because Don knows as much as I do the position that we're in. Everyone talks a good game, but once they start training with you, they'll try to out train you or they'll ask you if there's certain promotions or things that you can do for them. We right. don't have, we, you know, oh, if yeah. Don does next 10 reps, I'm like, I'll give him a fist bump. I'm like, yeah, good for you. And if I, if I come up short, if he's using a hundred pounds on dumbbells and I use body weight, I'm going to do what I can and he'll support me. I'm not like, Oh my God, I got to outdo him. 
you yeah. know it's like that's oh, yeah. fine and like don does something I'm like hey this guy's really cool hook up with him he's gonna you know do this this don will be like hey frank call this guy like we support each other to find that on a long-term basis before it, it rears its ugly bullshit head right is Special. very it's 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 that small percentage that you're going to find that because most people have an agenda when they train well that's the Back thing i think that, oh good i just want to say i just want to say that that that's the thing you know you, what you said is it's not about egos like you guys are at a point where it's not about like trying to one-up somebody or look good in front of a on instagram or whatever it's about you know it's about as you said feeling good and yeah. I got to get back to that because honestly, I'm sick again. I feel like shit. I've been sick a hundred times. I feel like this whole, like, I know it's partly kids because I got two small kids and they're yeah. boogery and they're just, they're snotting and they're doing all this gross stuff with other boogery kids. But man, that was part of it. Like I've really this past week and I've talked to you, I talked to you guys about this at the Olympia where I said, I need to get, I need to do different, do different things because I'm, I'm not really in a headspace to be motivated. And then I start to get on this track and then, God, do I start to feel like shit again because I, I get a respiratory infection or I get COVID or I get whatever. And it's like, it's just been this stutter step this whole year so far. And I, I cannot wait till I just get some, you know, runway so I can get, get some momentum and get moving because I just don't feel like I'm there yet. Uh, mm. I don't know. <laughs> the Olympia kills from sickness. Yeah. Oh. I mean, everybody oh. got... I mean, it threw us back. Don had certain things that he was going through. I was going through. It took us a good month. We're still not 100% back. You know, my endurance is 100% back. And, that, you know, like I'm trying to get back. But there's never going to be a perfect time, no matter what. It's always going to be problems. Yeah. It's always work around them. It's only, you know. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it, it's a really smart thing that you just said. And I think a lot of times people are waiting for that perfect time. A really mm -hmm. funny story. The other day, a buddy of mine called. He's like, can you help me with my diet? I said, sure. I said, can you do me a favor? Can you just track your next two or three days? And he's like, no. And I'm like, why? He's like, well, I'm going to Florida. I said, okay. I said, let me ask you a question. How many days were you in Florida last year? Because I know you travel a lot. He's right. like, I'm, probably, uh, I'm like, out of 52 weeks, how many weeks do you think you were there? He's like, I don't know, 20 to 25? And I looked at him, I laughed. I said, dude, go track in Florida. Like, it's not like, if you're waiting to be home, then you're going to be 50%. Like, let's figure out, let, let's teach you how to do this on the, on the road. And I think that's, mm -hmm. it's never going to be a lot of times it's difficult to be perfect on the road, right? Like, and we've done it, like Frank's had shoots where yeah. maybe he's away and he's, he's, you know, brought meals or, or had meals there flown out or whatever. And I've done the same, but you know, I was in Texas last weekend and you do the best you can and you just try and, you know, keep the wheels on the, uh, you know, keep the, I'm sorry, keep the train, uh, wheels on, on the, the tracks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you know what it is, Don, you said the other day, I, what we also have in common is being very frank and blunt and honest. And a lot of people cannot handle that. Like you told your client the other day that he was fat out of shape, right? Like you were like, tell that story and I'll tell mine. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the other day, he, um, a client of mine is telling me about adrenal fatigue and I have a good relationship with him. I've never called anyone fat in a day in my life except this guy, but I, but, but he said, you know, what the hell is, you know, what the hell, um, I think I have adrenal fatigue. I think it's my hormones. And I'm like, Mike, you're just fat and out of shape right now. Like, let's, let's keep it real. But he needed to hear that from me. He turned right. around and he was like, what? And I'm like, stop putting it on adrenals. Like he, yeah, you have to, you know, recognize that this is, you know, right. this is something else. But that's also building a relationship, right? You don't just go to somebody on the street and be like, hey, fatso, like you're, you're saying this, this is somebody that you've known and that yeah. you have this understanding yeah. and that needs to hear it. So, and, and you know, look, yeah, sometimes, you know, the truth hurts and it has to be somebody like you that's got to tell them. Uh, I wanna, I'm this, brutally honest, Zach. Like, with yourself I, or with I, other people? I don't have the patience for this, for the, for bullshit anymore, especially as you get older. People will ask me all the time about contest prep and they'll ask me or even top Olympia competitors will be like, what do you think? You've seen everything. And I'm like 16th place. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, you asked me what I thought. Right. Do you want me to tell you that, you know, uh, yeah. you're the greatest bodybuilder in the world. So when you go to the show, you're disappointed or you want me to tell you what it is like Andre Ferguson, you, you know, he's won the Arnold, won all these shows. He sees me before, like two weeks before the show. He goes, what do you think? I go, I don't know. Fifth, five through seven. He's like, what are you talking about? Five through seven. He came in right. fifth place. And and people tell me what they're doing. And I'm like, you're sodium loading? Are you an idiot? You know, like, 
if you don't want the, the right. honest right. truth, like I had a client who ran the boiler room back in the day from the movie. He was really outlandish guy and he was at a uh, prescriptive <laughs> fitness in the city, Don. And he's like, bro, I want to try 225 on the bench. And I'm like, you can't do 225. He's like, bro, I can do it. I'm on the juice. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, all right. I go try it. But let me tell you this wave all liability as my trainer. I'm going to walk away. I'm not even going to spot you. I'm not training you today. You're on your own deal. Deal. Guy goes in, puts 225, ripped like a sheet of paper. <laughs> Two seconds later, we're on an amb in an ambulance going to the hospital because he tore his entire pec off the bone. And I'm like, he's like, we're in the, in the ambulance. And he's like, bro, why didn't you tell me? I go, I did tell you. And he's like, well, you should have been more. And I'm like, you shouldn't have been an asshole. You should have listened yeah. to me. And I'm like, and this is the result. So, you know, that's what you need that voice of reason. <laughs> Well, yeah, people the, tell you that you can or you can't do anything, you know? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Don, do you, you see this comment? This dude's getting his uh, blood work for te test levels. Um, if it's low, he's going to – I mean, so this is – okay. This is a question I think that I'd like to, to jump onto. This guy's saying he's going to get his testosterone levels checked, and <clears> if <throat> if it comes back low, he's going to start to uh, – I'm looking – pumping in that testosterone. Juice his balls off? Uh, yeah, 50 milligrams a week and slowly go up. Listen, uh, so – from, okay, from somebody that I think I have low testosterone, or I, like I've been um, like low to, uh, you know, low, like low normal. That's what I've been for a while. But mm -hmm. I'm thinking like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get checked again this year, like I always do. And uh, if they're low, I'm like, you know, there are there are ways to combat that. But are so many people now just die, like kind of almost hoping that they come back low so they can just take. They have an excuse to to take TRT or to get HRT. You know what I mean? I feel like that's kind of the case. Um, look, I had my test levels checked, and they were eight fifty. Eight fifty was my normal te test level, and the um, free yeah. testosterone was low. And they're like, "Oh, we can, you know, we could raise that." I don't think it's a point if uh, you know certain places that they're gonna be like turn you down or whatever. I I, I don't yeah. know the the protocol. But I don't see, look, if you want to do TRT, that's fine. Sure. You know, you gotta, you should really look into the long term because once you start, you're going to have a hard time mentally uh, and, and physically coming off. Right. Yeah, you know, that's a tough one. Like, you know, when I competed back in the day, I trained, I started training at 12 and I trained for nine years of heavy training, three hours a night. And then I took a shot at to stop. I, I took Sustin on to get ready for my show, and you know, and then I blew blew up. But I was already two hundred and forty pounds. So yeah. whether or not your testosterone's low, you need to build a foundation of your body because, like, you know, you don't start like, oh, I'm going to start a program. I got my belt, I got my reps, and I got my juice. Yeah. You right. Know? Because yeah, you're right. going to look like a sack of shit because you're not yeah. going to. You don't know enough about your body. Go. You don't know enough about your body. You don't know enough about nutrition. I mean, no. listen, I'm 46 years old in April. Frank knows that I've, I've never taken testosterone. I've never no. taken a PED. And, you know, maybe when I'm, you know, I, I don't know, 70, 80, if my quality of life starts dropping and I have a doctor who's monitoring these things and I'm continuing to do all these other things right, if I know I can get another 10, 15 years, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I just... I, I've got a different outlook on this. I, I saw a friend of mine who went through exactly what Frank was talking about. It was my head trainer at my club. Uh, it was back in 2010 and he abused testosterone and mm -hmm. he got on it. It wasn't being monitored by a doctor. Remember back in 2010, it wasn't as right. widely discussed as it is now. And anytime he went, he was on it for so many years. He would have been 10 years. He would have been Frank. He would have been probably 54 five now or 54 he would have been he would have been in his 50s but he died he he died at yeah he died at 42 so he died at 42 years old he had a triple bypass surgery at 38 years old i had to come home from vermont i was on a family vacation to see this guy in the hospital no family no nothing and Jeez. we went in and we got our testosterone measured and at the time i was like low sevens and when t they tested tommy's uh testosterone it was north of three thousand. <laughs> right, the north of 3,000. And 
he was trying to get off of it. The guy couldn't fuck. I mean, he's up. I, he's up all night. He'd be having sex with women three plus hours. Couldn't, you know, Ugh. couldn't have an orgasm, you know, couldn't blow a load was, you know, waking, coming in, cramping, white as a ghost would try and get off. And I find him in the back, laying down the ground, exhausted, unable to sleep. And I saw him go through this for years and it scared the shit out of me because yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, we don't really know how we're going to respond to anything. Yet I'm seeing these kids, these young kids in their 20s who have zero training age. They can't deadlift 225 pounds or squat, you know, 135 pounds, yet they're they're gearing up, but yeah. they still look like shit. It's incredible. Frank, they have no muscle density. There's no muscle ma maturity. They don't have that like look of like you're 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 an ass kicker. They no. they just look flat and soft. And they may have a vein down there on and there are all these like they're all standing there in the mirror flexing and i'm like guys like you're just missing it like frank grew up and he said something to me the other day and it was it was honestly there, there's so much truth behind it. he goes when i grew up there were basic things i was getting strong my squat my bench my deadlift and we <laughs> focused on getting those maybe overhead press right and then you you get these lifts strong and there's carryover and it builds these this yep. muscle density and this stability and it builds this frame and you know i i, I um I, I have i always urge someone to really speak to a uh speak to a qualified doctor before deciding to jump on 100 percent. look i'm i would never come on here and, and I'm, I'm not the liver king i'm not o'hearn i'm not this like how could i say a 314 pounds or 267 on stage shredded oh yeah i was natty Give me a fucking break. You know yeah. You're the first like, guy I got to go public with it. You were the first guy. You were yeah. the first guy. No one went public with it ever. I think you might have been the first human being. I think you were, no, I think you were the first human being to go public. I've never heard anyone saying, oh, like, I remember the article, Frank Seppi goes natural. And yeah. you openly talked about it. And it was like, holy shit. I was a young kid at the time. I mean, I'm, I'm 46 in April. So. Yeah. You know, you're, you're what, five years older than me? You're 51? So, yeah. like, you know, I remember. So, at the time, you're, what, 22? So, I'm, what, 17? Right? Yeah. And I'm going, I'm at 17. I'm like, finally, holy shit. Yeah. This is yeah. great. Like, he's opening his book up. And it was actually great to see what you did with your physique. Because I got to be honest, like, I think you look way better now at 50, well, 51. Think about it, too. Like, you know, the acute, how, how people accuse you of doing stuff. And now I'm like, you know, 235, 230 and people are like, Oh, he's on stuff. I'm like, no, give me the stuff that you're taking. I'll show you how it works. You yeah. Asshole. yeah. I mean, <laughs> but that's, but that's the thing, right? So like just the fact that you're, you're willing to, to be straightforward yeah. and same with you, Don, like whether you take something or not, I don't care. Like it's, it's, that's up to you. But the fact that if, if you do or don't, and and you sit there and you think you said liver king or you know I don't know like oh her and that's a discussion that's just like uh, I, just feel like it goes every which look, way but it just doesn't matter exactly to me look we John Don and I always got the question about oh and I love Mike and so does yeah. Don and who gives if he's yeah. on or he's not like it doesn't change yeah. my life if he says he doesn't then yeah. I gotta believe because he's my, my friend if he if that's what he's saying why should I not believe him I don't know and in all fairness to to him and I said this to Frank. Yeah, I am yet to meet anyone. I mean, maybe Frank can go into that same category. Mike's been training since he's 12. He's never had a sip of alcohol. He's never smoked a cigarette. He's never done a drug. The guy's never missed a day of training. Yeah. Okay. And if anyone is going to look like Mike and be natural, it's Mike. He's yeah. been it's at like gold Bennett three hours in the morning every yeah. day for the last 50 years. So it's like right. 40 years, <laughs> 50 so years, <laughs> 40 years, I don't, 40 years. but I'm like, you know, uh, look, if, if he says he is, he is, I don't care. Who cares? Yeah, like I'm I not, I dude, I'm with you. Uh, I'm the same. Th I'm the same way with you. I'm going to, uh, so if you guys don't mind talking for a sec, I'm going to pull up this dude that, uh, there's a, he's a CEO. I'm gonna get it together. He's a CEO who sure. he spends 2 million each year. Uh, yeah, on, you saw this dude. Yeah, he kind of looks like Legolas to me, but uh, you know, it's it's, it's but yeah, it's like I, I'm just glad that we finally like you know cured cancer and things for this guy to just piss away. <laughs> it's his money, I guess he could do whatever he wants. But that's the first thing I thought of. I was like, good thing that we've uh, good thing that we've cured cancer and there's no uh, awful things happening in the world. 
How about the 35 year old guy that spends $99 on a program and, and has the same gains? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm trying to figure that? out how to do this. Yeah. So here, there, here he is. Uh, look at, I don't know. The second, the second, uh, picture is, is a little bit, uh, suggestive. Uh, but yeah, so he's 45. So he's 45 years old and he spends 2 million a year to get an 18 year old body. But Okay, biologically, I guess it's been shown that he's about five years younger. But even you know, a lot of doctors and other longevity experts are like, "Look, it's it's minimal. This isn't really gonna gonna pan out." But I'm like, I, I don't know, man. I'm like, I just this. I feel like he's 45. I feel like if Frank's 51 and you're 46, this guy does. He looks older than you guys. To me, she give, she give us the 1.9 million, and we'll. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll right, split the two million and we'll work with you. How about that? Um, <laughs> listen, I mean, to each his own. I mean, unfortunately, you start finding that a lot of people don't want to put the work in, and I, and yeah. I, and I guess you know, it's it's not about spending the money. Like I'm, I'm, I'm questioning. Like, all right, well, what's his training been like? What's his lifestyle Oops. like? Like, what right. has he been doing? Like, yeah. his, his physique looks fine. I mean, in in, in our good. world, a normal body. It's it's. You know, but listen, if he's happy, if he's got so much money where he needs to spend that to allow himself to feel a certain way, then hey, man. yeah, I guess it, I, I don't listen. A hobby, yeah, you got that much money, like buying a car, I guess, right? Well, you the other thing car, is, you buy so, but what about quality of life, right? Like, how can if you're if you're it's super regimented, you're kind of yeah. and, and look, this isn't this is just a commentary on it in general. I don't know this guy, I don't really care to know, I don't, I don't, whatever, but how can you even have a life? If you're just every single part of your day from your from the minute you wake up to the minute you go in, well, maybe he goes into like one of those like uh, I don't know vampire coffins or something like the ones <laughs> Michael Jackson used to jump into. But I you know, how do you how, yeah, how do you have any type of life? Who wants to hang out with that? Like uh, you know, I don't know. Just to me, it seems like uh, all all negative. But I don't exactly. know. that's why I never that's why I never dated uh, bikini competitors because I didn't want to go through the pre contest. <laughs> oh <laughs> gosh, yeah. <laughs> Because Don and I, like, we're we're ninety five percent on, but like, if we go out on the weekend or whatever, we'll we'll eat what we want, and we'll have, you know, we'll you have to live your life. That's yeah. why I I don't understand. I, I could never do intermittent fasting because what am I going to do? I'm at my kid's birthday party, and I'm like, wait, my fasting yeah. doesn't uh, come into it. I I just you know, good for people who do, but it's just not for right. Me yeah, it doesn't. Well, it kind of reminds me of this, uh, this, this, this guy just brought up Elon Musk. And the, and the one thing I thought about was, I guess, one thing that he's been in the news about for you know, many things is, uh, I guess he took that Ozempic. You guys have heard about oh, that? God. Like, so, so many people are taking this that yeah. the people who need it can't get it. And the minute they come off of it, they just gain the weight again. So Terrible. it's just, I don't know. I'm like, is it, I guess people have been looking for a shortcut for a long, long time. And everyone's and looking what? for a shortcut. Everyone's right. looking it's for like a shortcut. Yeah. But Frank, the exercise, know. Jack, the exercises, they haven't changed in a hundred years. No. Right. It's like a they real life filter. And they're not going to. Yeah. That's a real life filter. Going. That's what that is. I mean, yeah, I agree with you. Nothing. You can call it what you want. You can name it what you want, but it's the same. It's the same as it always has been. It's the same yeah. remedy. Bodybuilding's been a microcosm for all the diets and mainstream and, and methods. No matter what, who you are, or what you, you know, celebrities out there or athlete, it's all the same thing. It all comes down to mindset, consistency, and how much you put into it. That's all you get. You know, that's it. Like, look at a boxer. Like, you know, you just watch a Jake Paul fight. He's like, I was off my game. I didn't train a hundred percent. Like, what did you think the outcome was going to be? Jake you Paul said I mean? that. Like, yeah. Jake Paul, Paul said that. Like, yeah, so what did you think the outcome was? Well, I trained for a show, a bodybuilding show, but I wasn't able to squat because my back hurt, and the judges said I needed legs. What's all, you know, or I got right, ready for yeah. my wedding, and I was on this crash diet, but I, you know, I binged eat the last three days, and I gained 15 pounds. It's like, what you put into it is what you get. Yeah. I never understood something. I never understood something. Um, you look at these competitors, right, it's, it's Zach, and I know, like, bodybuilding's not your... You always express it. It's like you like it, but it's not like your thing. But this is nothing right, to yeah. do with bodybuilding. This has to do with feedback. When you're at a show mm -hmm. and you place 10, and there's plenty mm -hmm. of competitors that are pissed. You see it on stage. I see guys that get called out. It's, it's obvious as you're a fan in the crowd and you know a little bit about something. 
I saw a guy this year who got called out and he kind of made a face. I'm like, no, you deserve to be there, right? Right. I would be going, shaking the hands of the judges after and, and, and play the game. Like, hey, um, what did I need to improve? Or what do you think, right. how do you think I can improve? What do I need to do that's different? But they sit here and they fucking argue. And they sit here yeah. like, I don't deserve that. This and that. It's like, it's, I think it's the worst attitude. Uh, one of the worst things, one of the worst traits to have as a human being. I judged for 17 years, and I, I can tell you that a handful of almost fist fights that I had with pros and, and how many pros get hurt. Like, they just get so crazy. They'll walk out the back door without taking their trophies and everything else. But the good ones take criticism, and, they and you know, they apply it, and, and they come back better. It's all mindset. But, but you also said it, Frank. Like, they ask your opinion, and you tell them. So, like, and, and then they get mad for telling them. So... You know that, and that's. I've even talked to Steve about this, where he's been yeah. like, "Look, my I have close friends in the industry, but when they're competing, I, that's not me as their friend. I'm doing my job, and if they're good, they're gonna be scored that way. If not, they don't." And he's like, "Plenty of people have come at me afterwards, and you know, been upset." D dude, look in the mirror. It was you, not me. <laughs> he didn't. Yeah, do it. I mean, you know what, Steve? Steve helped me for my last uh, last couple of shows, and like. You know, I came in and he'd grab your back like the, you know, the fat or whatever. And he'd go, all right, do 100 carbs for 10 days. And you thought you looked amazing. And you're like, oh, shit. You know, like, but he would yeah. tell you the truth. Get the best out of you. A lot of, so many people can't, they can't take it. Can't take yeah. it because they start, the biggest thing now, the difference from back in the day to now is social media. Because they start to believe their own filters Oh. They put something up and they put it up and look how good I look. You put a filter on it. And then everybody's like, you look amazing. Or you, you put up the sharpness of it. That's not right. what you look like. Right. You know, so, so get over yourself. And now you're going to take that filter from a show and place it together and say, well, shouldn't I have beaten this person? No, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have. And you shouldn't put a filter and like, stop believing, you know, the, the bullshit of the filters and then all the fans that chime in and, because I've seen, look, I the last couple of days before the Olympia, I shot some people at the gym. And, uh, you know, I look at their Instagram and I'm like, that's not the same person that I shot. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. And they wound up not winning. I was like, oh, well, that, that makes sense, you know? Yeah, no. <laughs> that, that, there's a thing now, it's called de-influencing. And it's something, I feel like, Don, we've been talking about this for a long time. And it's, I don't even know if it's a thing. Maybe it's just somebody coined a phrase and now they're trying to market it, but it's essentially people that got tired of influencers coming on and just peddling bullshit and garbage and trash. And it was real people like, nah, man, like this product actually sucks. Like it's not working. Like this doesn't work. Like you think it's going to work. Here's how. And like they give their take on it. And the whole point is, you know, they, they were probably rooked into buying something, some piece of shit that, you know, some trinket that didn't work. And, they just got sick of it. That's, I was so glad to see that that's becoming something where, you know, just, I don't know, but I'm sure it's still out there. I mean, look, it's, it's never going to stop. Like that's to, you know, but I, that, yeah. I, that I brought up, but that brings me to something. Either of you guys, have you, you know, you guys be, are approached by plenty of brands and you don't have to name them, but ha has there been some that you were just like, no way, like hard, no, not doing it or just, you know, turned down because either their, their company values didn't really uh, reflect you or your brands. Yeah. I, I'll even talk about it. Like there was, I did a few, like there's like, like a CBD, like I won't work with a CBD company anymore. Right. Like there was, um, there's just certain things that I think are just too difficult to quantify. You know, when you're dealing with a product like that, where people, some people are like, Oh, I can't really tell. Is it really working? Like it really takes time for you to understand if things like that work. And yeah, I, I mean, there have been products in the past that um, I thought I really liked and I worked with. I have a rule now. I will not even have the conversation. Like I signed with a company last year and I, I said, I got to use the product for six months. I was like, do me a favor. You want, you want, you're interested in talking to me. I need this product for six months. I'm curious about it. So I'm going to invest my time and energy into learning about it. Right. And then after six months, I had a conversation with them about it. Right. And then I think the discussion can, can start. And I really believe we need to spend time with these products. And one, like 
it, Frank, you know what I'm talking about. Like there's certain things yeah. that might be out there that you're just not going to do, right? Like, okay, like cool idea. Yeah. If I'm not going to use it personally, I can't pr pr promote it, right? Yeah. I got uh, recently a clothing company sent me stuff. It was like burlap with ridiculous things on it. <laughs> Not wearing i wouldn't wear this under any circumstance and another company sent me an ed drug right that was like <laughs> i'm not using it. yeah <laughs> i'm not using this either um but usually like oh you know, there's so many supplement companies out there that'll send you bars or they'll send you like how was it well like you know i farted 37 times is that normal right. like, <laughs> i'm like this to to my, my part, friends and everything else Especially people throwing money at you. You know, you have a lot of stockbrokers back in the day who decided to yeah. get the fit industry, and they'll come up and they're like, try this product. And they're like, what do you think? How's it taste? I'm like, it tastes like shit. Yeah, like, sure. Well, what do you yeah. mean we're doing this? Like, this is not something I would use, so I'm not going to tell everybody else to. So, yeah. Let me, let me give an yeah. example. So I, I wore this company, Aura. I wore this product for oh, this company. Yes, 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 exactly. I wore this product for a year and it became part of my lifestyle. It was like, okay, I don't care about the workout data. I care about the sleep data because it led me into yeah. specific directions of like, oh, if I eat at nine o'clock and I'm going to 10, my sleep gets affected. I need to be eating at 7.30. You start finding sweet spots. You start making behavioral change based around this information. I would have promoted this to certain clients. It tracks steps. Right. It's some readiness information. So this is right. something I was putting on people's hands before I even work with them. Right. And yeah. then I was able to start working companies like that. 100%. If it fits my lifestyle, if it's something I would have promoted anyway. Yeah. Then yeah, we could See, talk, but otherwise food, I don't deliver, food delivery services too. Like there's so many of them that offered free food to me. And I was like, listen, I'm not going to eat it. So don't send it to me. Give it to somebody who wants They're Like, what do you mean? You're not going to eat it just not for me. And I wound up going to a place and paying my own money for it. Cause I know that's, you know, it's, it's a guy's business. I didn't come in yeah. here like you know who I am. Like I want to support his business and this and that. And sure. he's like, Hey, you know what? I want, I want you to partner up with us. And I'm like, no man, just, I'm happy to pay for it. You know, they don't have a ton of money or whatever it is, but just, I use it, but I'm not for these big companies. Like, here you go. And I'm like, this kind of sucks. I don't want it. Yeah. You know? well, I'll tell you on the media side, what a lot of them like to do, uh, like is not, not the meal plan people, but a lot of the supplement people is they, they want to pay for, you know, native advertising, but basically yeah. it's essentially like a, it looks like an editorial article and it's not. Mm -hmm. And it, it says nothing about being sponsored or partnered or branded or anything like that. And it's supposed to come across as if, the, the brand or the editors themselves were like, wow, this is fantastic. This is the best thing yep. ever. And, you know, I, I push back about on that stuff a lot because it's, that's not, that's not right. It's just, I, you know, it's, try, it's trying to fool people and it sucks because the idea yep. is maybe it is a fantastic product. It, it's possible, but it, to me, it's a little weird when my suggestion is, well, then if you want to advertise, here's how you do it. If you want to do you know, straight editorial, we're either going to come across it. Like Don said, I got, Don talked about the aura ring to me so much that I was like, Hey, can you hook me up with one? He did. And I got to say, honestly, it's fantastic. I really, really like it. I've had it and I don't even like, you know, wearing rings, but I wear it every day. I charge it like every three days or whatever. And it's fan mm -hmm. It's awesome. I would have no, just like you said, no problem writing about it or, 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 or telling people about it. But yeah, I just get a little bit it's a little bit uh, off-putting when people are trying to find ways to be sneaky, you know? Exactly. And also, I ran, you, sorry, sorry, Frank, go oh, ahead. When I ran the Metrics Magazine, that's what we did. We covertly put it in the editorial, you know, with celebrities and everyone else who came in and their PR people would be like, oh, okay, you know, you could put it at the end. It would be like, oh, they used this product or whatever. But if you're going to sponsor an article or it's going to yeah. come in, then pay for an athlete that you did on your own right. dime. That yes. tried it and everything else, and don't because it's an indictment on you if it doesn't yeah. work. Right. You know, I, no, I'm with you, and like, they definitely did that too prior uh, with Eminem, and that's fine. Like that, that's understanding because we what we did was my take was this: a, I there I was losing that battle anyway, but b, like let's make the let's make the overall feature or topic not just about this. Let's tell a story that people yeah. might connect with and then throw it in there. Like you said, like, this is what they use or whatever, something like that. Why but, not give, 
give it to 10 soldiers or give it to yeah. 10 people at the gym and then do the article based on the results and whatever on that. But I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it got to, it just gets to the For point real. sometimes where, yeah, where I'm pushing back too. like, no, I don't, it doesn't people, I feel like people are getting smarter about this shit too. And it makes everybody involved with the whole production or anything look like shit when it just comes off as cheesy and hit you over the head with, you know, it just, yeah. I don't know, man. That's why Don, like Don and I collaborated on that sleeveless workout program. And it's like, we're real hundred percent. If like, if anybody who's watched our shows and like just on Instagram alone, I mean, for years, we got to have 10, 12 million views, uh, you know, and we got a ton of people, but the one thing that we are is consistently real. We didn't put yeah, together yeah. a bullshit program. This no. is a collaboration of what we did. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're not going to lie. We're pretty much straight up on everything. So I hear totally you. Great. Guys, yeah, and that's, uh, but that's why are you going to jump? You going to jump, dude? Yeah. All right. No, I, we can wrap I this do. up. I, you guys want to do this again sometime? Um, I would like. Yeah. Why, why, I would don't we do next, next, why don't we keep this, Frank, why don't we keep this ongoing? Tuesdays at. 1130. I mean, you want to do this next week? I would love, listen, whatever. I love talking to Zach. When I talk to Zach off the camera too, we're going to fucking be <laughs> laughing our ass off because we can care worse. But yeah, I would love to. I love Zach. Come and train with us. Yeah, I know. I got to. Honestly, I think that's partly what it, what it comes down to. I want to come train with you and I want to be in a room with everybody and do yeah. some stuff together. Uh, that way we can, you know, I think it'll be a little bit different chemistry. Like I, I just enjoy definitely. that. That Definitely. So let's do it. Um, you want to do... Um, do you want to do next Tuesday? You want to just be safe and say 12, Frank, or do you want to do 1130? It gives us 90 minutes to train. Is that, that's. What yeah, do you, what let's, do do, let's do 12. This way we can't, you know, like, uh, we can do 1145. Gives an hour 45, right? Whatever you guys want. You, you got, whatever you guys want. You want to just say 12? Yeah. That's cool. Zach, right. I'm putting it in as a, a standing 12 o'clock every Tuesday. So we'll okay. see. You, uh, we'll see you. Um, and this is great. Uh, let's. I mean, this Keep is what going, it's all man. about for me, man. Next, so let's go next Tuesday, 12 o'clock, all right? We're all talking right, cool. balls and juice and what else? <laughs> uh, well, oh, there I he goes. Don just bounced. All right, dude. Bounce. Listen, Frank, I'll, I'll call you right after this. All right, brother. I'll talk all to right, you. All right, later, later, man. <laughs> Thanks.